Hello, I'm Javis Lewis and in this episode I'm going to show you how to create a morph for something in Das Studio outside in ZBrush. So have something from Das Studio, bring it into ZBrush, morph it there and then bring it back to Das Studio. This is a video that I've promised Alan Innes for like months. Hello Alan, sorry it took so long but uh, it's one of those things that had to be on the 1st of January 2019 that, I'm, that it, it just took so long but hey finally they're better late than never let's delve right in and see how we can do that there's a little bit of prep work actually that we need to do i'll show you how the workflow is and then i'll show you the prep work that you need to do in order for this to work and to happen let's jump right in so this is das studio 4.10 and let me head over here to the smart content tab and bring in a character let's just say the genesis 8 basic mail let's do that I've already got ZBrush open here in the background. So uh, as soon as our character loads or whatever object it is that you want to morph, then uh, you select it here, make sure it's selected, and then head over to File. And there's this little thing that's called Send to ZBrush. And we're going to talk about more how that menu item actually gets there in a moment. So for now, we assume it's there and so we click it and it'll ask you export at current resolution, export with deformations. And I say we, we just, we, we, it doesn't matter what we tick here. For now, we just, we just leave that ticked. The PC switches to ZBrush or the Macintosh switches to ZBrush and we can see nothing. And that's because the tool is here so it's loaded it as a tool and uh, for some reason there's no preview here sometimes that happens so but if we, when we click that uh, we can drag this out and there he is this is michael hold down shift to whoops hold down shift to drag him out without any skewing motion and without doing anything else head over to the edit function in zbrush now i'm not a zbrush expert i don't know much about the program i can find my way around but i find it all very very puzzling so uh, for now bear with me here if we don't go into edit mode right away then that means we'll be drawing out lots of michaels and that's not what we want to do so head over into uh, into edit mode there right away and uh, let's let's zoom in here and give him i don't know something on the back maybe uh, let's decrease the draw size a little bit to something like that i'm also going to switch on symmetry which we can find i always forget this but i have looked it up just a minute ago we can find that on the transform menu so on the bottom here there it is active activate symmetry x is what we're looking for so that when we do this here on on his thing why doesn't this work now then we should be seeing this. Oh yes, uh, sorry. This is what happened to me earlier. I'm glad it's happening now. Uh, nothing appears to happen when I'm drawing on him because Michael 8 is made out of, or Genesis 8 male and female are made up of the body and the eyelashes. And for some bizarre reason, this is now probably got the eyelashes selected. So uh, that is not something I can I can draw on here. So in order to do that, let's head over to the subtool menu. And there we go. These are the eyelashes. And we want to, of course, draw on the actual body. So make sure the body part that you want to select on, that you want to deform is selected. So let's select that. Uh, body changes color and now we can see that things are actually happening here. let me undo that head over back to transform and activate the symmetry on this particular sub tool and then turn the man around and draw something on his on his back or so maybe this is you know he's becoming an angel or something and these are these are wings that he's going to grow out there something like that so just so that we can see something is different about him perhaps not a work of art here but you get the you get the picture perhaps we can we can do something on the um, on the head as well yeah let's make the head shape a little bit different there yeah. something like that so we we get the we get the picture when we're done we don't really have to do anything other than find this little button that's called go z or gauze whatever you want to call it i believe it's called go z for go to zbrush to and from zbrush and this is an api built into zbrush that'll make it possible to for zbrush to interact with other applications so if we click that mine is already set up i'm just going to go and say continue it knows that this particular figure came from that studio and it'll send it back there right away 
if you're using GoZ for the first time, then ZBrush will ask you, hey, is Cinema 4D installed? Is Carrara installed? Or I found Photoshop. Is that correct? Would you like to use it? Is this the right path to Photoshop? So it'll ask you this once and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop asking you that. And then that one button will bring the morph back into the application that it came from. So it remembers that. It switches automatically back to Das Studio in which we now see this dialog here, Create Morph. I can give this morph a name and I'm just going to call that, I don't know, um, Scary Back. And it'll be in the group of ZBrush. We can change that later, it's not a problem, and just hit Accept. Once again, nothing appears to happen, but the morph is being generated. If we have a look at the Parameters tab, then we can see that we have indeed a group called ZBrush and a morph called Scary Back. And if I uh, zoom into this man, and if I increase that slider, we can see that his head shape is certainly doing something something bizarre. And on the back, it's doing exactly what I had dialed in there in, uh, in ZBrush. So uh, it's not the perfect morph, but it's a good demonstration of how to do real work between these two programs. You may have also seen that when I brought this morph back, there was a, an option to override the existing morph. So if I'm not quite happy with this, I can now go back into ZBrush and just keep morphing. Perhaps uh, that, that head thing here, that wasn't quite what I had expected. And perhaps uh, on, the, uh, on the back, maybe I've, done, I've overdone it here a little bit. So I can, I can just do that and just, uh, just flatten that out just a little bit here. And... Um, you know, start again with something like, like a V shape or something. So if I'm happy with that, and maybe I'll give him something on the on the front of his body as well, yeah, something like that. If I'm happy with that, then I can go and click Go Z again, and the same thing will happen. I'm going to hit Continue here, and over here I'm now getting the option to override an existing morph. So if I wanted to call that one Scary Back again. Then I can just go and hit accept and then these changes will be made, uh, will override that morph that I've already got here so I don't get a second morph. But you can do that as well, uh, just keep adding other bits to a character that you're, that you're forming or to an item of clothing that you're forming and that's how that works. And we can see that this is exactly what's happened here. This is why my new version that I've just created there in, uh, in ZBrush. So uh, the little bit of prep work that I was talking about. So um, this button in both in the button in ZBrush is already there, but this little menu item that is under File Sent to ZBrush that is not there by default, and we can get that by using the Install Manager and telling Install Manager about where ZBrush is. And once it knows that, we can then go and install this little tool called Go Z for Dash Studio. Let me let me show you what I mean. If I open my install manager, I believe I don't have a shortcut to it here. It's under DAS uh, 3D, uh, DAS install manager 64 bit, that's the one. So if I log in there quickly and have a look, I already have that tool installed. So if I type GOZ into that uh, search menu, then I can see I've got GoZ for Carrara and for DAS Studio 4.10. That's under my install tab. So if I wouldn't have that, then it would be here under ready to download. That does, those are for the public build of and for publishing build. So there'll be just one for the regular one right here. And before we click on one of these and install it, we need to tell the install manager where ZBrush is hiding. And to make that clear to install manager, that's up here in this little gear icon under applications. And uh, then we have one, mine already says ZBrush 2018 64 bit. That wasn't there when I just installed that here on my Windows PC. That's the first time I'm actually using ZBrush on a Windows machine. Uh, since they've changed it over, there was a proprietary license, one for the Mac, one for Windows. And they've just updated that, that with one, since ZBrush 2018, you can now with one license use it on Windows or on Mac. That's very cool. So I can use it side by side. It's very exciting. Thank you, Pixelogic. So um, I can uh, go here and just click that plus icon and then uh, select ZBrush from here. And that'll add that entry in that 
in that uh, table here like like I've had here and I've already got my path set up here but uh, if I were doing this for the first time then I can find ZBrush on my local system so on my case that's in, in the, um, on the C drive under program files I believe uh, he says yes in pixel logic there's ZBrush 2018 in the past it was that ZBrush have changed the main install directories whenever they've had something available so uh, ZBrush 4R7, ZBrush 4R8 they all had separate directories so when that happens make sure you update your directory in install manager so that it knows where that application needs to go so that's one thing once that's done install it then relaunch Dash Studio if it was running or just leave it closed install it then open it up again same goes for ZBrush close it down reopen it if it was already open and then this menu should be available under file sent to ZBrush and in ZBrush there'll be this uh, there will be no dialogue for Dash Studio specifically it'll just know where that is apparently which is which is nice at least that's what it was like on, on my installation and that is it really that is how you use it one final peculiarity I believe when you've had a previous version of Gozi installed for say uh, ZBrush 4 R8 and you've just upgraded to 2018 then you should uninstall the previous version while it's still there just uninstall it just find it here in the installed tab uh, click it click it here and just say start queue and then this will uninstall this then head over here update the path to ZBrush and then reinstall it because otherwise that studio won't be talking to the correct ZBrush application if you have multiple versions installed it's all going to get really really messy so make sure you uninstall the one you don't need anymore then update the path then install the GoZ for that studio again and that is really it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, then please uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm not a ZBrush expert, but I do remember there was this, this really interesting, very short and snappy video by Blaine Ferner from DAS. And sadly, they've taken it off that channel. I guess it wasn't snappy enough anymore for 2018, 2019. I think it was very helpful, and uh, this is in the same spirit. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, and if you need any other help, uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.